welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're going to be continuing on with our informational series. Uh, in yesterday's episode we looked at variables and how we can utilize them to our needs. And in today's episode we're going to be covering arrays. So with variables they are single bits of information that we store within uh, these variables. With arrays they are multiple bits of information. So very much like creating an array, we create this array option over here on the left hand side. For this example, I'm using the object um, variable we created yesterday. And to turn it into an array, you just need to select on the variable that you've created. And on the right hand details panel where this little pill object is or um, icon, select it. And in the drop down, you have the option for an array. Now I've already created one here. It's exactly the same thing as that. Just click on the drop down, click array, and you can use the get. You can also pull out and get the set, but be careful when you're setting arrays, you will uh, remove every instance you've added to it and replace it with what you're adding. So I don't ever advise using a set, but you can use that if you need to. So we have our array. We also have our single variable object as well. And I've selected out some of the more important nodes that you should be using when utilizing arrays. Now, the first one I want to look at is adding something. So when we want to add something to our array. So there's two different types of adding to an array. We have a normal add and we have an add unique. So the differences between the two nodes, the first one being the add. When we add something to our array, so let's plug this in like so. You can see it's changed the color of our array variable. Now you'll get all the different colors depending on what you're adding. So you can add an integer, float, name, etc. When we add, we need to add something to it. Now we're going to use our normal object variable. So every time, so using the add, every time we add something to it, it's going to add it no matter what. So as an example, if I add this array using, let's say, the E key. Every time I press E, we're going to add one object to this addition. Now, if we're going to use the add unique, it's going to only add one because there'll already be one in there. If we try to add another one, it's going to know that there's one of these in there and won't add any more. So what would you use these for? Now, adding, you could use these for AI. Let's say you want to keep track of, let's say, for example, a zombie. If you wanted to add 50 zombies to your scene, you might want to add one unique one every time. So let's say, not unique, sorry. You want to add the same object 50 times. So you have 50 of this object, or let's say zombie as an example, into your array. So this array will hold 50 instances of that zombie. That way, when you come to the end of, let's say, a wave, and you want to kill them all, you could just clear the array and remove all 50 zombies. Now, you might want to add something unique. Now, let's say you have a weapon system. You have a pistol, a shotgun, a rifle. You might only ever want to add one pistol. This can be seen in games where you pick up weapons to add ammunition, but you don't need to add another rifle. So you could say, okay, I don't have a rifle. Let's add a rifle to our array, but that's the only rifle I want to add. Everything else is just going to be ammunition from that point on. So you'll pick up the rifle. It'll say, okay, we have a rifle. Let's not add any more. So you'd use an add unique in that example. But everything else, you would just use the add and create this and add it to our, our array. Now, that's just a adding something to it. Now, what about if we want to remove something from our array? So we have these three nodes down here where potentially they will help us to remove something. So first things first, the clear. That's the easiest one. That is just plugging your array in. If we pressed another button, let's say it was R this time, it would take everything that's in this array and remove it um, from our array. So it would basically wipe the array clean and have a fresh slate array. If we want to remove um, one specific item type from our array, we could plug this in, plug this into there, and let's say we had um, zombies, we also had ghouls, and maybe some flying bats. If this was our zombie, 
It would remove all instances of that zombie from the array, but leave the bats and the ghouls still within our object array. So it's only going to remove one instance type. Then we have a remove index. So every time you add something to your array, you get uh, it gets assigned an index number. So 0, 1, 2, 3 as an example. Using this index number, we can grab that index, decide what index we want to remove, and it will just remove that one from the array. So if we had 0 to 10 in the array, and we said, OK, we want to remove index 7, it will just remove index 7 from your array. So there's lots of different ways you can remove things from your array. Um, and it's just about knowing which one you need to use for what you uh, require the code to do. So that's removing indexes. We also have these two handy nodes. Now, this one is the length. So this will get the total number of um, indexes in your array. So again, if you had 10 items in your array, it would bring back the bring back 10. If you had 50, it would bring back 50. It's just getting that total length. There is also another one that I didn't actually add into here. Uh, we can get the last index added to the array. So if you add an item to the array, it will uh, get that very last index. And you can utilize that if you want to get rid of um, the last index that you added. Um, and you can, again, do something with that, whether it's removing it or adding it. As is, Again, it kind of goes hand in hand with the, um, not this one, the remove index. You could say, okay, I want to get the last index and I want to remove that from the array, for example. And then we have a get. So again, it works very similarly. Um, you can choose the array you want to get and find that object's information. So for example, if you're using a struct as an array, um, let's say I use it in the Pokemon with the moves. I know in my Pokemon game, the moves are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the four total moves. If I was like, I want to get the fourth move, uh, I could put in index three because zero is technically your first index. So it goes zero, one, two, and three. That's your four indexes. Or again, I could get move one and do something with that move. So that's kind of how those work. Um, and then we also have this set array element. Now, this is very, very good if you're doing something like uh, an RPG. So let's say you have a list of potential items in your index library. Um, and every item you create for your game, you give it uh, an index number. Um, so there's lots of ways of doing that, by the way. If you create an item from nothing, like you procedurally create items, you can make it give it a unique uh, index value. Um, so that way, you know, if you're creating new items on the fly, they'll always have their own separate index. Now, Again, we could plug our array in there. And we could plug our object in there. Sorry, it's getting a little bit messy. Um, and then we could say, OK, we have an index for that object. We could get that index and set it to a unique index within your array. So that's also very, very helpful if you're doing things like that um, for adding these things to arrays. Because the one thing you want to make sure you're doing with arrays is you're not creating something messy because you need to know where those objects are within your array without creating too messy of an array. So for example, you might give an apple the index one in your item library. You might give a sword the item value of 20. You want them to sit in your array potentially within that same index. So if you added an apple to your index, it sits at one. Um, you also might want it as well that every time you add an apple into the world, it gets a new index. So every time an apple's made, it gets index one, two, three, four, five, for example. Then you might add a sword that'll go to the next index and then you might create a shield that'll go to the next index and it will remain as that index for as long as it's in the world. So that when it gets added to this array, um, it holds that unique index value. Um, so that when you pull it out of the, the array to use it or um, potentially uh, sell it maybe or just drop it on the ground, any of those sort of things, it retains that index value and doesn't get just lost in the array and you start dropping the wrong item, for example. So that set array element is very useful uh, for things like that. 
Um, and I've created an example of how to use this. Now, there's two other uh, potential uh, nodes that we can utilize called a for each loop or a for each loop with break. And I will show you an example of one with the break. So I've created a struct array, as you can see down here. And I've also created a second one called Apple Inventory for our useful example. So the strat in this example is our item lists. Um, let's say we have our inventory and we have apples and swords and shields and potions, all sorts of stuff in our inventory. And we want to take our apple and add it to another um, special inventory just for apples. Silly, silly example, but it's just to get my point across. So we take our inventory. Um, we add it into a for each loop with a break. Now, the two very useful things within this break is that we can get our array index and we can also get the array element. Now, with a for each loop, what it's going to do is it's going to run through this array. It's going to start with item zero, one, two, three, go down the line, and it's going to check every single item we have in our array. And what we're looking for is the item name. And we're looking for any items in our array that equals apple. Now, it's going to come back false for every time. Let's say apple's in the item index five. It's going to check zero. It's going to come back false. It's then going to check one. It's going to come back false, etc., etc., until it's number five. It's going to check to see if it's called apple. If it is, we're going to add that to our apple inventory, this new array we've got. And what we're going to add to it is that array element. It's going to go, okay, where's Apple? Where's Apple? Where's Apple? Finds Apple, stores its Apple uh, array inventory information. It's going to then add it to our new array of Apple inventory. That's great. We've added it to the new array, but we haven't removed it from this old array yet. It's still sat at number five. So what we have to do is remove that from that inventory array. And by doing that, we say, okay, we've stopped on array index number five, which is Apple. We're then going to remove that index number five from our inventory. And once we've done that, because this is with a break, we don't want to remove another Apple. We've got our Apple. We're happy we've removed that information. And so what we do is we loop back around into the break, which stops this for each loop, it stops it going any further. It stops it going to number six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we would come off the complete to carry on doing whatever we want to do, whether it's use the apple, destroy it, whatever, drop it. We can make that decision once we've done this for each loop. But that's just a very, very basic look at what we can do with arrays um, and how we can move them between arrays. Um, that's just a brief description of kind of adding and removing arrays and how you might utilize them in a very basic kind of inventory inventory style. Um, hopefully you found this useful. Uh, if you have any other questions on arrays, please put them in the comments. I'd love to cover some other different parts of arrays. Um, and thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment of anything else you'd like me to cover. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.